Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plug and Boutique. And today we're checking out Saturn 2 by FabFilter. Saturn 2 is a massive update from Saturn 1. It comes jam packed with new features and I'm excited to share it with you. In this video, you can expect to learn about every new feature and just in general what Saturn 2 is capable of. So for reference, for people who don't know what Saturn 1 was, Saturn is a saturation and distortion plugin. It's got multi-band capability, modulation, and a whole host of other features. It can go from anywhere from subtle saturation to lightly color sound all the way to distortion and even bit crushing and just really gnarly effects. This is Saturn 2 on the screen. And if you're familiar with Saturn 1, you'll know right off the gate that it looks much different and it looks much better. This is completely resizable. If I click and drag on the sides here, I can make it any size I want. There's also, if you click right here, some preset sizes and even full screen capability. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is come in and just choose clean for now. Okay, so as I said, Saturn 2 is multi-band and a way to add a band is to come up here to the top. So right now, this saturation unit is gonna color, cover the full frequency range that comes into Saturn. However, if I click this add button, I now have dual control over this crossover point. And I can have up to six bands. Come up here, I can add up to six, doosh, doosh, doosh. So you can see I have really precise control over any of these bands. One of the new features added to Saturn 2 is the crossover slope options. We can go from 6 dB up to 48 dB. There are also a number of other features that are really great for using Saturn for mastering, and that is the linear phase option down here. You just click it once to turn it on. When it's green, it's on. And then there's the high quality. We've got good and superb. So this is oversampling. Good is going to be eight times oversampling, and it's gonna be good enough for most applications. Distortion processing introduces digital aliasing effects, you know, especially in a higher drive situation. And when you enable this high quality mode, you drastically reduce aliasing artifacts, though it does come at the cost of CPU. So that's why they say kind of in the manual that good is gonna be good enough for most people. Superb is actually 32 times oversampling. So good is eight times and superb is 32 times. That's going to be a massive drain on the CPU. So if you're experiencing aliasing issues and you want to make sure it's like as least as it could be effectively zero, then you want to turn it on superb. This in conjunction with the linear phase option is really going to help Saturn 2 find its way onto mastering effects chains. Now some other additions to Saturn 2 that are geared toward mastering are the subtle saturation, subtle tape, subtle tube, and subtle transformer. So those are just really, really scaled back or pushed back saturation modes where you're just looking at that little bit of color. So again, let me come over here and just clean this out. And right now I'm gonna turn it on, let's turn it on saturation, gentle saturation, and I'm gonna boost the drive on this piano. To bypass it, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this off. This is what the piano sounds like uh, unaffected. very clean, natural tones there, and I'm using that so you can really hear what this saturation is doing. So the default gentle saturation, you can see as I increase the drive, the actual background here gets a little bit brighter. And at 100%, it's really, you know, you really can hear it and it's really adding a bunch of color. If I come into saturation, turn on subtle saturation and leave that drive all the way at 100%, you can see that it's only coloring it a little bit. And that's the same thing with the subtle tube, subtle tape, and subtle transformer. And while we're on the topic of distortion and saturation modes, inside of the amp section, we now have two American amplifier recreations or emulations and two British rock ones. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and flip through those so you can hear them. I'm gonna leave the dry on 100%. <laughs>
So as you can hear, they're really nice sounding emulations of amplifiers. And obviously you throw those on some guitar and you're gonna get some really, really great results. Other new ones are the entire transformer section here. We've got three different types. The subtle, obviously for mastering. Gentle. And then warm. There are also two new effects, the fold back and the breakdown. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on breakdown. I'm gonna control click this to set it down to zero. So obviously a really crazy effect that it's gonna get a lot of use in breakdowns. That's probably why it's titled that. Very cool. And then the fold back. Some really, really cool effects there. So one of the biggest focuses for Saturn II was the modulation capabilities. To add a modulator, you just gotta click Add Source down here. And a few of these got big updates. For example, the envelope generators. Once I've added that, and by the way, all of these are color coded. If I add an XLFO, uh, you can see here it's kind of this light green while well, this one's a blue. And this is gonna come in very handy once you have a lot of modulation going on and you wanna just kind of visually see what's modulating what. If I take this little uh, disc here and just drag and drop it onto the drive. So you can see that happening. You can see the animation there happening. If I click this, I can actually have my full screen view of the modulator itself. That's the same thing with any of the other ones. I'm gonna come in here. And another new feature inside of the en envelope generator is the slope. We can now adjust the slope. So I have my attack time over here, but now I have uh, full control over the slope of that attack. Now another really cool thing too is if I add a second band or a third band or a fourth band and come over here, you can see that I have my normal input to trigger this, or I can have my external side chain to trigger this, or I can trigger it through a MIDI input, or another new feature for Saturn 2 is the capability to trigger it on a per band basis. So if I wanna trigger this envelope generator from the low end content and only the low end content, I just turn it on band one. And you can see that this modulator is on band one over here, or the band furthest to the left by this little blue dot. If I click that little blue dot, I just have my controls over here. If I come down here and then you can see the drive has that little blue dot. Again, this color coding really works to help see things clearly. If I click that, I have it over here as well. And this is where you set your range and you can invert the range and you can also invert the range over here or bypass to see what your effect is. Let's turn on something like. If I add this LFO to that as well, you can see the LFO there. That's that yellow line. And when it's yellow, it means it has more than one parameter active, though you can see down here which two parameters have been routed. And you can also see that up here at the top as well. And again, we can adjust the range. And in fact, let me go ahead and just get rid of this. And I just wanna show you here, if I invert this, it's just gonna go down instead of up. So depending on what you're looking for. Another new feature is the threshold will actually have the input velocity level. So you can easily adjust the threshold value while seeing the input signal. You can also audition the internal sound if you click and hold the headphones here. So that's the sound that's actually being used to trigger the threshold. You can also turn it on normal or neutral sustain. So normal is a range between zero and one and sustain outputs zero when it's in a sustain mode. The envelope follower also got an update here. If I just, in fact, let me go ahead and clean this out. I like just to keep things clean while I'm doing these. Come in here to the envelope follower. Again, click to open it up. The envelope follower now has a transient mode. 
If I click right here, I can have this follow be triggered by the envelope or the transients, which would be helpful for something like a bass with a lot of attack or especially something like drums. And also, I mean, just look at how good this looks. We've got the uh, envelope follower attack and release times, and it just looks so good. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, if I jump back into the envelope generator and open it up, if it then add something like an XLFO, this threshold parameter is now um, automatable. So if I do that and then do this, you know, I'm now having kind of modulators modulating the modulator that's modulating the drive. So you can really start to get creative and in-depth with what's happening inside of here. And in fact, if I come into the XLFO, both the frequency and the balance parameters are modulatable as well. And so is the glide. So I can modulate the glide, I can modulate the frequency, and I can modulate the balance. The balance is gonna be towards the bottom of the dial, and it's that outside ring. You can see here I've got this, and that's because we're having this modulate that and that modulate this, which is kind of negating what we're looking for. But I'm just trying to show you that these are modulatable parameters inside of the modulators themselves. And jumping back into the envelope follower, the same deal if we have multiple bands, we can trigger that envelope follower by the normal input, by the sidechain input, or by any one of the bands. And they're just going to pop up here as you add more bands. So if I have another one come in here, I can use that band as well. Another cool thing about version 2 is if I double click, I can rename these to keep things really organized and I know really quickly what's going on. Another thing about the XLFO is that we have a re-trigger option and a legato option. So just to further keep, I'm gonna come into effects presets and just turn one of these on. You can see how gnarly they are. You can actually modulate the crossover position as well. And I just wanna point this out while I'm inside of here is I can easily see what is modulating each one of these bands. And if I click up here, I can see my entire modulation matrix and I have full quick access over the ranges. You know, I can easily change those, I can get rid of them, I can invert them, I can bypass them. Uh, it's really, really helpful. And I can also see that on a per band basis, I can see what's modulating these crossover positions. And any one of the parameters that's being modulated, it has the same deal. It's got a matrix in and of itself, just by the parameter. So this is per band up here at the top. This is by parameter. And then this is the controller itself. Having it all color coded and actually seeing kind of these heat maps, it's just a real great visual way to see what's happening, even if you don't even have any audio playing. Another new feature are these sliders. And in fact, I kind of skipped over that. So let me go back into it while we were talking about the modulators. Uh, slider control. And what this is, is essentially just like the XY control. If I click and drag that onto the drive. I now have control over whatever range we set, again, by clicking right here, if I wanna go 100%, I now have control over that there. And that's kind of like a really easy way to have kind of mixing capabilities uh, to get things done quicker. And you can have up to six of those. And those are six sliders or six XY controllers or any combination, so up to six. And this XY controller is essentially this slider, but with two controls with it. And then down here, we actually have kind of a preset where I can turn that slider into an XY one, and you'll see that it's a little bit different. And that's because I have it from zero to one. If I turn it from negative one to zero to one, then it then becomes this one, and we can have control over the left and the right, bipolar as, as it's called. And that's the same thing with the slider. If I come down here and turn it back to a slider, if I have it negative one to zero to one, then I can do it this way as well. And I can easily come in and change those however I see fit. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is obviously we've got some new presets inside of here. We've got ones for coloring, drive, guitar, lo-fi, and effects. And then we also have presets for any one of the modulators. So if I add, let's say an envelope generator and I click this little arrow next to the title, I have some nice presets to get me somewhere quickly. If I come in here to the XLFO, for example, you got lots of presets to choose from. Once I add that, if I open it up, I've got my presets. So a really huge update to Saturn 2. It sounds absolutely phenomenal. Anyway, I'm Joshua Casper. I hope you learned something. Links as always in the video description, and I'll see you in the next video.